Do you relax? Like, do you like take like two seconds? No, I, I do not. Gotcha. Um, I know that people do. <laughs> I'm just like a workhorse. Like, yeah. you know, like I just got these heads. I want to get them out. It's my personal belief that kids are waiting for them. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like they want to see them. They can't wait to see the video. So I try to get it done as timely as possible. Gotcha. From the cubicle to the lab, the studio to the war room, climbing the corporate ladder or joining a scrappy startup, experience a day in the life of the jobs you want. You're now listening to the Experience a Diddle podcast. You'll hear from professionals, entrepreneurs, and recent grads, all inspiring you to gain experience beyond the classroom and launch a career of your own. We're your hosts, Chris DeBeau. And Matt Poe. Welcome to the first episode in the Sideline Stand-Up Series with multimedia sports journalist Courtney DuPont. In this episode, we're going to get you in on the action to experience a typical day in the life of a multimedia sports journalist. Small spoiler alert, it's a lot, but in the best way possible. Super exhilarating and rewarding and fulfilling all of that jazz if you're passionate about it like Courtney is. Courtney works for a startup media company called Jersey Sports Zone. Can you just talk a little bit about Jersey Sports Zone, how it got started? Um, sure. Jersey Sports Zone is a startup company. Um, we started at the Shore Conference in New Jersey, obviously. Um, we expanded last year for our first year of full state coverage. I am the ambassador for the north um, west part of the state. Nice. And what we do is we go to sporting events or um, events with feature uh you know, possible content, things like that. We shoot the entire event, conduct interviews, and then um, we shoot stand-ups for ourselves, all one-man bands, and uh, we produce the content the the night of shooting and and push it out social media-wise and online on YouTube and on our website as well. Sweet. So what separates you guys from, like, other Jersey publications? Other uh, sporting events, you mean? Yeah. Um, So we're definitely more visual than most of the companies that cover high school sports. I mean, almost all of them are paper. Nice. It's really outdated. Um, Also, social media is huge for us, which I'm sure you guys get with the whole (laughs) podcast thing. So um, the fact that we have Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, as weird as it sounds, most other companies don't have that right and if they do have it it's done really poorly hmm. we regulate ours every single day um i'm sure there's something being published right now as, right. We, as we speak so okay now that you have the background you need without further ado let's jump right into the day it's saturday in september in phillipsburg new jersey it's 8 a.m. and Courtney is up and at him after only five hours of sleep from the night before. Fridays and Saturdays are long days since those days are when most high school sports take place. But that doesn't stop her from getting her pump on. But first, the most important meal of the day. Eating breakfast is super important for me because I do not eat lunch because I will be shooting. Um, and sometimes I don't get to dinner till very late. So breakfast is very important to me, usually two eggs and um, bacon. That'll suffice for the rest of the day? yeah. Yeah, wow. uh, uh, probably maybe three eggs. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I eat three eggs, like, and I don't do much physical activity at all. So that's <laughs> okay, so nine a.m., nine a.m. to ten a.m. I get to the gym because this is something that is important to me. Um, I need to be confident if I'm going to put myself on camera. Um, if I don't go to the gym, I my self confidence goes way down, and it's just something that you know it makes me feel good. And my advice to anybody. If you are going to be on camera, you need to feel good about yourself. So do what you need to do to feel good about yourself. I know that for other internships and positions that I've applied for, um, a lot of the requirements is being able to lift heavy things. Yeah. Is that, was that a conversation? It is a positive that I work out a lot um, and I do like to lift. So there you go. It it does help because the camera is not super light. It's just not. (laughs) Okay. I was just going to ask, what do you do at the gym? It's just lifting weights and cardio? Yeah. Yeah. I used to. Not do cardio as much, but I've been getting better at that because now I have to run up and down the sidelines. So cardio needs to happen. (laughs) Another way Courtney makes herself feel confident is by making herself laugh and not taking herself too seriously. If she thinks too much about her performance or what she's going to say in the moment, she tends to mess up. That's why doing your homework is important. Yeah, you have to do the stats research. Um, Sometimes you can throw up a big number. Like I had a kid who rushed for over 300 yards the other night. And that's, you know, it's a huge number to put up um, for a high school student. But 
I I am definitely more of like the I had a, a kid from Hillsboro who's this, he's a very little guy but he's a great running back he's really explosive really good good kid and everyone on the team was calling him the best kept secret in New Jersey wow thought that was a great line use nice. that in all my stand ups I was like that's that's gold like that's exact and everyone fed off oh yeah he is the best kept secret right. you know just something good like that that you can mm-hmm. say it's it grabs people attention more than the numbers that's my opinion a right. lot of people love the stats but I I like more of the right cool things like well, that you always <laughs> say like when we're when we do watch we don't watch sports as much as we used to but when we do watch sports they just throw out like these random numbers oh, yeah, and random stuff like that yeah. like, where did you get these stats what if this a lot is of the, the first time some guy ran this amount of time in two weeks ever it's insane <laughs> <laughs> well the whole thing is they're trying to bring you something that you don't know which is fine but like you know a lot right. of them are outdated a yes. lot of them you just don't care just right exactly tell me something new like, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. Back to the day. So now it's 10.30 a.m. and Courtney gets back from the gym, showers, and gets game day ready. I need to do makeup and hair. Again, with the confidence thing, I like to have curly hair and have nice eyeshadow on if I'm going to be on camera. Just want to ask a question about that. Yeah. So I just hear a lot in articles and in classes at Rutgers and just really everywhere that like personal brand is a, is a thing and establishing your personal brand. What was your, ex- like, did you have an experimental phase in establishing your personal brand? Have you established it yet? And what is it, was this ever a conversation with Jersey Sports Zone? Like, my this appearance, is what you need to be, yeah. My parents know. Uh, Jersey Sports Zone's always been very supportive of the way I've looked, which is great. I really appreciate that. Um, Sweet. I did change my hair probably 50 times. Yeah? <laughs> I, was I've it, been blonde. Was, I have ombre. I've... Interesting. Was Ridiculous. it because of this or just a personal thing yeah, and it, it was just an, ended up being it was always me associated? Always me trying to please myself, like how I looked on camera. Um, I wanted to look like the girls on TV, you know, and I just I couldn't figure out really how to do that. I used to do straight hair very clearly over, you know, time. Curly hair is the way to, way to go on camera. Yeah. You need volume. <laughs> like yeah. It's just I need to do it. Um but I haven't fully found my style, I don't think. I think I have, like, my makeup down. Like, I do brown eyeshadow, and I have a little bit of mascara and blush, and that's it. That's what there I do. There you go. Okay. Um, but the, yeah, the hair is something that I'm still still working on, but definitely curly. Big. Nice. <laughs> Love it. Are there guy MMJs that at Jersey Sports Zone, mm-hmm. and do they make um, an emphasis on their appearance as well? Yeah. Know? So um, one of our MMJs is my friend Neri Rodriguez. Okay. He is uh, the mostly South. He does more, mostly South Jersey. But we actually just talked about this, about how his teacher, he went to Rowan, used to tell him to always bring his makeup bag. And I'm like, <laughs> you have a makeup bag? <laughs> <laughs> but um, he, yeah, he says you know on the hot days you gotta he he's, you got a powder he's got a powder he's so got a he, white dye. all right all right so appearance is important not only for the girls but for the guys <laughs> there too. you go okay <laughs> want to talk a little bit about women and sports journalism it's you know a good this, way to segue off of the <laughs> yeah, <looking>. exactly <laughs> um so the past couple of years have been you know pretty historic with you know first all female sports broadcasting team and there's female refs yes female refs <laughs> all of that can you just talk about your views on the industry and the fans acceptance of women in these roles and do you think that both parties have a long way to go or do you think the tides are turning and just anything you have to add to that i think it's pretty obvious that females are getting much more involved in sports just from watching it on tv you see female reporters all over the place mm-hmm. um there is a lot of pressure, though, being a female reporter. You make a mistake, they're going to come down on you twice as hard because, you know, um, it's just the way it is. It's just I've made me- I covered wrestling for the first time this past year. And I, I don't know a lot about wrestling. He, you know, people in my life know a lot about wrestling, but I don't. And uh, I learned a lot this year. But, you know, I made a mistake in the scoring. I didn't know how the scoring properly worked. And I got berated for it. Like Wow. By it, who? Uh, fans, a lot of fans. Yeah. It was, I want to say it was, I forget what school it was, but I got, I got, you know, my butt kicked for it. And wow. it was like, okay, I really, really need to focus. You can't make mistakes. You have to do your best. Mistakes are going to happen. But as a female, like you need to be accurate or else be you are going to really pay the price. And, um, yeah, you just have to really focus on it, especially if it's something that you don't fully know. Like I know going in that I didn't fully know wrestling, like, you know, I know a couple of things, but not much. And it was one of my mistakes. I needed gotcha. to do that better. Nice. <laughs> but, Has there ever been a time where 
I don't know whether it was getting an interview from a player or coach or like fans, maybe mm-hmm. that kind of stuck out to your mind that th- that was like, wow, that was clearly sexist. Honestly, I haven't had too many bad experiences with, with it. I will say being a female reporter, I think that most athletes find you more approachable. That's almost like so it's a, interesting. Almost like it's an advantage. Yeah. Um, you know, there's definitely hardships of being a girl in this, but I walk up to people and I'm very happy, you know, big smile. How are you? You know, like, you know, great yeah. game today, things like that. You want to f- seem very friendly. And I think being a female even softens you a little bit more. So people are more willing to open up and say things to you. That is so interesting. That's just my opinion, though. I I don't know. I know that there is there's still that resistance. I think I felt less of the resistance between a coach, player and media simply because I'm a girl. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, that's just from, from what I've been doing, though. It's 11 a.m. and Courtney is on the road for her hour drive to the game at Bishop R. High School in Edison, New Jersey. Usually tend to forget something and end up turning around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I was going to yes, ask. Yeah. Usually because you can't forget anything. But, Do you have um, like a checklist like that yes. you use religiously every time? I need my checklist. I'm, right. I'm a super organized person. So I have like a literally a note in my phone. I'm like, okay, camera. Because <laughs> where I keep my, which is probably, I should change this, but where I keep my camera, where I keep my batteries is two different areas. Okay, okay. It's just not a good idea, but whatever. I use my checklist and I get them. But, um, yeah, so at 11, I'm usually on the road going to whatever event I have to go to. What's your car ride like? Do you listen to sports or you I listen, listen to, to music? Podcasts. You listen to podcasts. I listen to podcasts. <laughs> I always listen to podcasts. Cool. I, love, I love the, I don't know if you ever heard of Pat McAfee. No, who's that? Oh, my God, he's so funny. He, he, uh, he was a punter for the Colts. And he started. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he is know. so <laughs> yeah. funny. Pat McAfee. Um, <laughs> there's Pat McAfee Show 2.0 and then Heartland Radio 2.0. Those are my, I love those That's guys. That's their they're, go-tos. They're okay. hilarious. <laughs> I wonder what the 1.0 is like. Oh, well, they used to be partners with Barstool. Ah. Then they separated. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Makes sense. Makes yep, sense. yep, yep. She arrives at the field a half hour before the game starts. This gives her enough time to prepare for kickoff. So, obviously... Between 12 and 2.30, there's hundreds of games going on. Yeah. How do you choose which game you're going to? So this is big for Jersey Sports Zone. We are 100% free for anyone who wants to see our videos. Okay. We are run by sponsors. Um, gotcha. So our sponsors drive our priority coverage. I'll give you an example. Phillipsburg, the town that I'm from, actually, mm-hmm. is a sponsored school. They're sponsored okay, by okay. their own booster club. So they get priority coverage. Gotcha. Um, and we're, you know, at Phillipsburg games a lot. And uh, other ones are like Hillsboro, Bridgewater. And that's where we go if there's not a huge matchup. Like, okay. say there's a gigantic game. We have to be at that game. There's right. no way we're going to miss that game. But if it's a day where it's like, okay, well— Kind of all the same level. We're going to go to a sponsored school because... Gotcha. You know, they, What if it's two deserve. sponsored school at the same time? How do you choose? Well, there's multiple journalists. We have multiple right? journalists. So, like, oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. So okay. do you get it's assigned? not just me. <laughs> so do you get assigned in that case or do you get to choose? I is get there a to draft? choose. Okay. It's really great. I've got, this... My job is so not normal. Like, <laughs> that is so cool. We get so much freedom in picking where we go. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's it's our judgment. Um, my first year probably wasn't as good at making the calls of what was going to be the best matchup as far as sponsored schools go. But after a year, like, you kind of know. Like, right. Bridgewater Soccer is usually a pretty good program. So if Bridgewater Soccer is playing, I'm, you know, I'll go there on there, one of those yeah. days. Things gotcha. like that. Um, just it's, again, being prepared, knowing your area, things like that. Cool. Very cool. So I want to talk about your setup process when you first get there from unloading you're doing this all by yourself yeah right? you don't have anybody you don't have a cameraman right? no once in a while my boyfriend and my dad will come with me okay. <laughs> oh nice shout out yeah. to dave yeah all right. <laughs> mr dupont you rock <laughs> so so you you're unloading everything and i mean we'll get into your toolbox later but yeah. what is that setup process looking like honestly walk us through? it's not as bad as you think it is um i you know i take my tripod my a camera bag which has my mic and my actual camera in it and all the batteries and then I have my backpack that is like a must I tried to do the purse thing as a female reporter I was like oh a purse like that'll look professional backpack is the way to go it goes on your back and you don't have to worry about it but um it has my laptop my charger and any paperwork that I have on the teams just like notes that I made for myself I get there I kind of like put them in a place where they'll be safe because I'm not going to be able to stand by them. Like, yeah. I to, you know, and then uh, take out the camera, plug in batteries. Uh, usually I set up my tripod, but I won't, I don't use my tripod to shoot. I'm all freehand. 
So I, okay. you know, make my way over to the field, find the best place to stand according to like the sun, making sure that, you know, there's no glare on the camera or mm-hmm. anything like that. And then I just, you know, I hang out, talk to some of the players or coaches. Um, if there's any storylines that I need to find, that's when I kind of figure gotcha. out, you know, cool. What's what going are you on. asking them? Just like, you know, hey, what's up? Like, you know, hi, what do you think about today's matchup? You know, small talk. Gotcha. Try to get the, the juicy stuff. Get out the of juicy them. stuff. <laughs> totally. Um, do you have a favorite spot, like a signature spot that you go to at every game? Or it just depends on like the weather? Definitely depends on the weather. Gotcha. Because I can't stand it when I'm shooting and the sun is beaming in my face. It's just <laughs> it's impossible to see. And I'm right. trying to follow a very small ball. It's, yeah. But gotcha. it's just it's just wherever the sun is. Usually nice. I base it off of that. What happens if it rains? Oh, I got rain gear. I'm out there. Okay, I don't right. get to go home. The, 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 the laptop, the camera, it's all. Oh, like... it all has to be covered. Oh. <laughs> my ca- yeah, my camera bag zipper is acting funny too. So I need. Oh this. no! But yeah, I, I got a raincoat for my camera, and then I have my raincoat, which is bright blue, <laughs> bright jersey sports and blue. There you go. And then um, yeah, I, my backpack is waterproof, so make sure that my camera, my uh, laptop doesn't get ruined. Nice. Yeah. Um, does Jersey Sports Zone supply any of this, or is this all your own stuff? The camera and the uh, tripod and the mic and batteries. That's all Jersey Sports Zones. Gotcha. Um, the laptop's mine. Cool. Mm-hmm. Sweet. And do you have a uniform? We have polos that we wear. We cool. don't, it's not like mandatory. We don't have to wear them every day. I think I have two of them and then I have a sweatshirt. Cool. I think like us to wear the colors. I, I love the blue. It's right. bright blue. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great color. But um, yeah, we, we could have a little leeway with leeway that. Leeway with that. Cool. Yeah. Noon rolls around and it's time for the game to start. What's what are you look at? What's going on? What how's the game? Uh, what I are you to, doing? I have to start with opening shots. So you kind of have to get the team running out on the field. You their key player get a real close up, you know, nice shot of him. So mm-hmm. you can maybe take a, a still from there and put it as the feature image in the U- on the YouTube account or on the whole article. Um, so I get my opening shots, kind of nice, pretty, you know, artistic type shots, which is cool. Right. Um, and then follow the ball for the next hour or two hours, however long you're there. <laughs> like, gotcha. don't take the camera off the ball. And right. I usually shoot in 30-second intervals just so I can separate them when something good happens. Nice. Um, if I get a great shot of, you know, I don't know, someone scored a goal, right after that I shoot the scoreboard so that when I go back in, I can find where the goal is and keep track of everything. Cool. Yeah. I just kind of want to paint a picture a little bit. Mm-hmm. So the opening, you said you want to get opening shots. Mm-hmm. Do you, where are you standing? Are you ever like with the team, like running out? Are you ever, are you like just the opening shots? Usually I'm right with the team because it's annoying, I guess, for the kids, but I am right up in their faces. <laughs> nice. I am like, I need okay. to see the, sh- the sweat dripping down your face is Basically, what those opening sweet. shots look like. Um, so can you give any advice on people who are just starting out that are apprehensive to like get up? get all up in there and do it's, you have any tips on that it's uh, intimidating yeah even though they're high school kids like they're, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, like, there's a lot of them <laughs> yeah i mean they know that you're supposed to be there like mm-hmm. you we get media credentials like they know that you're media you're holding a giant camera right just have the confidence you need to walk in just be confident you know if anyone says anything to you, you just explain it to them like oh i you know i work for so-and-so you're not doing anything wrong right. that's what mm-hmm. people need to understand when you're doing that you're not doing anything wrong and you're going to be okay. And if you are doing something wrong, someone's going to tell you. Yeah. You, <laughs> you know just move. I mean? So you get out of the way. That's <laughs> the end of the day. Totally. Yeah, so. The game begins and Courtney is running all over the place, following the ball, getting her steps in. It's great. I don't even know why I do cardio. Actually. Do you have your phone on you? I do. Do you? The are, whole time. Yeah. I need it the whole time. What, My, are you, what are you doing using it? I am tweeting. Okay. I tweet a lot during okay. the game. Okay, okay. Um, I keep track of other games that are going on. Say I'm at like Hillsborough and... Something crazy happens, and I see it on Twitter at Bridgewater. I can get to Bridgewater pretty quick from Hillsborough. If I need to get there, I can. You know, it's just like staying in the loop. And on top of that, I need to be in contact with the other MMJs and my boss all the time in case they need me for something. So. Gotcha. What um, kind of questions are they going to be asking you during game time? From from your bosses or like other MMJs? Honestly, it can just be anything from I need this graphic or... You know, maybe he saw that the Bridgewater thing, it's just things that come up. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Okay. Like if I, if I need to go somewhere, if I need to do something now and you need it now, I need, I need to constantly be in communication. Gotcha. Yeah. Have you ever had to leave a game that you were shooting to cover something that was like breaking? I think I've had another a, area. I, d- I think I've had a couple of times where I kind of in the first year didn't pick the right game and we kind of figured out like, oh, this game sucks. Like by the end of the first quarter and I take off and I go to a good game. Oh, nearby. yeah. 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 So if, if you get enough footage of a game that is like a blowout, 
You can leave early. I mean, mm-hmm. that you're only going to show those first, you know, what, four touchdowns? Right. You don't need more than that. Totally. Yep. Um. So, yeah, th- sometimes I, I leave. It's That's not a big interesting. deal. And, I didn't know that. I thought you would have to stay the entire time. Yeah, I mean, if it's a blowout, interviews aren't really worth that much. People are, you know, you're not going right, to get too many clicks or views from that. Um. It's much more worth, it, it's worth it to go to the competitive game totally. that is exciting and people want to know about. Right. Yeah. So is this game exciting? Do you remember? The Bishop R. Carter right? yes. game? Yes. It was exciting because of the matchup. So kids from Carteret go to Bishop Bar. Uh, My ah, mother went to Carteret. My okay. dad is from Carteret, but he went to Bishop Bar. Oh, oh so, okay, okay, yes. all right. So, the story's coming. Yeah, all right. so it's, it's a, a competitive environment mm-hmm. because the two teams, obviously, the kids all know each other and things right. like that. So that was why this game was exciting. Um, and then on top of that, Bishop Bar was having a really good start to their season and Carteret put a put a smack down on them. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 What were some big plays that happened? Can uh, you remember? The only thing that I can remember in this game is because he was so wonderful was Jaleel Nix. He's a wide receiver for Carteret. Oh yeah. Kid's huge. And yeah. and I covered him in basketball last year. I hadn't covered them in football yet till this year. But I covered him in basketball last year. And the kid's just an athlete. And then I asked my dad about it later because my dad works in Carteret still. And I was like, you know the name Knicks? And apparently there's like this long line of history from the <laughs> Knicks family. They're oh, all yeah. athletes. They're all terrific athletes. So, okay. yeah, it was pretty cool. So do you ever get like caught up in the game and the action and like get distracted from your job? Like, <laughs> um, Yeah, no. I, I feel like I would do that a lot if I was in your job. You have to just... You have to watch the game through the camera mm-hmm. so that okay. when you're exciting, you're looking through the camera and, you know, if you move or something, at least you're moving with the camera. Okay. That's the whole, the, the main thing. And that was hard to do at the beginning because, yeah. yes, <laughs> I would get so excited for these kids because they do, like, amazing things. And especially if it was, like, you know, my hometown, Peaberg. My brother played for Peaberg, so I, you know, I had some... Connections. Yeah, like that. I was, yeah. you know, I wanted them to do well. So when I was shooting them for like the first few times, I'm like, oh, stop shaking. Like, just <laughs> relax. <laughs> Have you ever like played back your footage and have heard you've been like, yay, or like oh, something? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do playbacks all the time because there's a lot of stop, start and stop mm-hmm. with football and timeouts. Like, I'll go back and just be like, oh, I don't know if he actually caught that. And I'll slow it down on my camera. I'm like, oh, no, he's got it. <laughs> <laughs> and the refs will be like, did I make the right call? I was like, yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> So the game's still going on, and it's important for Courtney with her cannon to get shots of the star players in action and resting during timeouts, not only for the highlights, but for the gram, you know? Timeouts. Do you ever, are you ever taking shots of the teams in, in the huddle in timeout, or is that? Um, it depends. I mean, if so, if it's part of the storyline, so say, I don't know, I don't know if this happened. I don't think it did. But if Jaleel Nix had, yeah. yeah, yeah, hypothetically, if Jaleel Nix had this huge touchdown catch and then Bishop Barr calls timeout, Maybe I'd get, you know, oh, Bishop Barr is rethinking the strategy because, you know, Jalen Nix is mm. dominating the offense, something like that. Um, but, you know, it's not super important to do that. Gotcha. Um, more of it would be, at that point, it would be the focus on getting a nice tight shot of, of Nix. Gotcha. Yeah. And then during the game, are you ever doing stand-ups as you go? Or is it all at the end? Because you have to focus on shooting it, the game. It depends. Halftime, usually, uh, at a blowout game. You can do the stand up at right halftime, and pack yeah, up. <laughs> and pack up and head out. But um, a lot of it's at the end. Most of it's at the end, be- gotcha. just because like you you want to throw like numbers in or something like that. Mm-hmm. You have to say like so and so did th- had this many yards, this many touchdowns, did whatever. Sweet. You, sure you, you said all game. those notes are voice recorded, not necessarily ri- written down. Yeah, it's just okay. easier for me because I'm holding the camera. Yeah. It's just easier to have the sound, then I'll go back and play right. later. And voice recorded. You're not, are you talking, you're talking to the camera, like, yeah. just so that you're it's making notes? Just, it okay, looks cool. like me talking to myself and everything. Gotcha. Really <laughs> yeah, I just talk into the net sound. I sometimes <laughs> see, yeah, I sometimes see people with their iPhones, like, yeah. but, um, okay, cool. The game's over around 2.30, and Courtney's scoring some post-game interviews for the highlights and social media content. I interviewed Jaleel Nix, okay. because he had a great game. Um, the kid is such a standout kid like he's just such an athlete for that mm-hmm. team and then I walk up to him and I'm like you know Jaleel I don't know if you remember me he goes I remember you Courtney and like was, oh, he's, nice. he's so nice and uh, we had a great conversation about the game um, he really impressed me too because in the interview he says I was like you know is there anything that you need to improve after this game you know great win for the team this and he was like oh we need to be more disciplined that's the the biggest thing I was like for a kid to say that right. I was like that was really mature but <laughs> there you go <laughs> it's a good conversation It's nice that after only a year, some of the kids already recognize her. The relationships between the reporter and the interviewee is important because you need the scoop. You need the juicy stuff. If you take the time to become familiar and a friendly face, people will open up to you more, just like Courtney said earlier. 
Um, just who who else are you trying to snag for interviews? Um, at that point, maybe it would be like the quarterback uh, because obviously he was throwing the ball. Um, a coach could be could be interviewed. Like I said before, though, I think that high school coaches tend to give you the same responses all the time. Mm-hmm. So it's like okay, I get it. You have you know a responsibility, and you have to be loyal to your school, and you don't want to slip up, which I totally understand. But you know, I I need some personality and emotion. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, yeah. so that's where the do you ever coordinate in. like before the game with a coach and say oh like, yeah. Hey, like, yeah 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 I have. Talk, I usually talk to coaches okay. before the game. Um, think, like days before the game ever. Yeah, okay. yeah. A lot of times you ask for the rosters and things like, things like that because numbers change from year, obviously from year to year, different kids coming in out of the program. Mm-hmm. So I, I usually email them. Um, I don't always know what game I'm going to, so I can't say, hey, I'll definitely be there. But there'll be times where I'm like, you know, Bridgewater's head coach is Scott Bray. I'll be like, uh, you know, any updates is, you know, Jared, uh, not Jared, Anthony Goff uh, playing in – this game coming up or things like that. But nice. Yeah. Yeah. Talking to them is, you know, just keep talking to everyone. Do you talk to other media at the games? So when I first started this job, other media didn't know who I was. They, you know, they were like, who is this girl? Like running up and down the sidelines. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, at first it was like, there was definitely resistance and like standoffish, but people now there's like mutual respect because they've seen what we've done for the past year. Right. And so we talk and, um, sometimes even give each other leads. Yeah. Which is that's cool. cool. Um, but yeah, I like the mutual respect better than the standoffish. Right. It, was, it was very uncomfortable. Totally. <laughs> yeah. So there's um, no rivalries. I guess there's rivalries, you know, people have said over, like, oh, you're competing for views. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the weird thing is most of them are paper. They're not even in the same category as us. You know what I mean? It's completely different. Now Courtney is working on her stand-ups for post-production, summarizing the game and throwing in key facts in a very short amount of time. This isn't a season finale of Game of Thrones, people. She's got 15 seconds to give you everything you need to know about what just took place. The whole point of the stand, the the way we do stand-ups, we have wraparound sound, which is like, you do a stand up where you introduce your highlights that you're going to do, and then you, you know, I'm Courtney DuPont from Carteret High School. You're watching Jersey Sports Zone. Um, so that's just the wraparound sounds. Those ones are kind of easy because you're just kind of. Is that an industry wide term or is that something that you guys coined? Wraparound sound? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's industry wide. Oh, it is. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, and it's just kind of a nice way to package your. Your highlights, just mm-hmm. nice. So, you know, you have a face to the voice that's talking to you over the highlights. And gotcha. Like and you have that before you run the highlight, like before yeah. you start the yeah, highlights. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, you know, like Hillsboro sees my face a lot. I'm, you know, they kind of know who I am. And that helps with the relationships too, where you, you walk in and like, oh, it's Courtney, like from Jersey Sports Zone. And it helps. Um, and then the other stand-up is a teaser that we do. And we only do this for football because football is just where we get the most clicks and views. And it's... Kind of a summer, maybe like a summary of what happened in the game. Um, I had a, I had a game, a, another game in Carteret actually this past weekend. It was Colonia at Carteret, and it was Carteret's first game on their new stadium that they built. So their first home home game. Uh, a kid on Colonia was committed to Alabama, and then obviously uh, Colonia won. Oof. Yeah, so there was like a lot going on, but in the stand up, I kind of had to incorporate all those facts in a 15 second stand up. Gotcha. So it was something to the, along the lines of Courtney DuPont at Carteret High School, opening day for the Carteret Ramblers. They took on Colonia, who defeated them, I think it was 47 um, 7. Antonio Alfano, from the Alabama commit, had an outstanding defensive performance. And that's the teaser. And that's wow. it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So you kind of just have to. Figure out a way to sound natural and get a lot of information in a very short period of time. Okay, cool. I guess that, yeah. that happens over time then. you just yeah, getting good at that. Yeah, that's your reps. And, yeah. That's your reps. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Mm. cool. Sweet. And that usually takes you, what, like half hour? Yeah, uh, I'll do it a couple times too, just so that I know I like the one. You know, obviously mm-hmm. if you're doing live, it's different. You get one shot. That's it. Right. But um, I'm fortunate that I can do as many times as I want to. I can. I, nice. I, I wouldn't say it would ever be longer than a half hour, but right. if I gotcha. wanted to, I could stay there for two. Right, like. right, right. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And that's um, when you have the tripod up. Yes, right. the okay. tripod, and because I have to shoot it myself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. I turn. I turn the finder like this way. <laughs> cool. So just to. Um, what time is it when it's all said and done and you're packing up? So this was the Carteret game was in the afternoon. So I was probably wrapping up there around 5, 5.30, okay. which is cool. That's like a good time to get done. Mm-hmm. And then I have an hour drive back, okay. get in the car, hour drive back home. 
She gets home around 6 p.m., 6.30, and it's full speed ahead for Courtney. Do you relax? Like, do you, like, take, like, two seconds? No? I, I do not. Gotcha. Um, I know that people do. <laughs> I'm just, like, a workhorse. Like, yeah. you know, like, I just got these heads. I want to get them out. It's my personal belief that kids are waiting for them. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, they want to see them. They can't wait to see the video. So I try to get it done as timely as possible. Gotcha. Um, so I get home, and my parents say all the time, oh, you want to get a drink or, you know, just, like, relax and <laughs> eat some dinner? I'm like, yeah, afterwards. Right. I, I don't have time right now. <laughs> <laughs> So I get in and I import all my things onto my computer. I have a um, labeled folder on my desktop already, date and the two teams that played where I was. Then I have to import all of the things from that folder into Adobe Premiere, find all the clips uh, that are worth you know, showing in the highlight, whether it be scoring, sacks, interceptions, whatever it may be, mm-hmm. um, line them up on my timeline fill in my stand-ups, my wraparound sound stand-ups, mm-hmm. and then I start, uh, I lower the audio on the the highlight clips so that I can do my voiceovers over top of them. So I put them on the line. I do my voiceovers on my camera as I'm watching my plays go okay. through so that I can kind of narrate them. It's not a play-by-play type of voiceover. It's more of like, whoa, did you see that catch? That was unbelievable. Like this, that, you know, nice. just kind of And you're doing that... At home while you're... Yes. Interesting. Yes. Cool. So I have like a desk. Sometimes I do it in our kitchen. But uh, yeah, so I watch my things. I do my voiceovers. Um, and then I put do the same process. I put my voiceovers on my desktop and then I put them into Adobe Premiere. Then I have to start doing graphic things. We have a watermark for Jersey Sports Zone that we put in the top right corner. Then I... Oh, and I have to edit all the videos as well. I mean, all the interviews as well. So <laughs> I, have to, <laughs> I have to cut up all those interviews, make sure all the ums and stutters and all... Make the kid look really good, yep. you know? So I do that. Um, and then I have to start doing graphics. So the watermark goes in. We have a... Uh, stinger that we put at the end of the videos that kind of says, you know, if you want to be a sponsor of a Jersey Sports Zone, like, you know, this is how you go about it. So I put that in. If it's a sponsored school, which Carteret is, I put their billboard at the beginning. Um, Carteret High School, coverage of Carteret High School is brought to you by Campesino Restaurant, Carteret location coming soon. So that goes before the video. It's like five seconds. And then, um, then I had to do lower thirds for everyone that I interviewed. What is that? Lower third is like the the graphic that comes out at the bottom of the screen that says the name. Uh, okay, and like, okay. yeah, it tells you that uh, Jaleel Nix, number two wide receiver, had however many touchdowns or whatever. What program do you use for that? For the graphics? Yeah, for that lower third. Um, I may, I, I have made templates for everyone okay. so that it's easy for everyone to use in my company. Mm-hmm. Um, but I made them on Adobe After Effects. Okay, cool. So I think motion graphics are awesome. Nice. Yeah, so uh, I fill in, you know, my templates with whatever kid I interviewed. Mm -hmm. Um, I also make a graphic for myself with my stand-up. And then I have to make a end-of-the-game graphic, which gives you the score of both teams, um, what their mascots are, what their names are, what conference they played on, and then any sort of stat line that is interesting um, is at the bottom. Just kind of a cool thing that you can know about the game. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And then once all the graphics are done, all the voiceovers are in, I put a music track on the bottom, kind of for like just background noise, makes it. Flow and where do you better. get this music track? Uh, we have a, a library of music oh, that cool. we have licenses for, so nice. I select something from that. Um, and do you then, have a fave? There's one that's called I, "I'm Back," <laughs> and it literally reminds Sing me. Sing it for us. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know how it goes. It's, it's just a beat. It's, gotcha, it's, it's okay. just a beat. But <laughs> it remi- every time I listen to it, it reminds me of like. Michael Jordan. Like, okay. I just picture him, like, on the basketball nice. court. Nice. Like, just, like, I'm back. When you're <laughs> picking music, yeah. like, yeah, it's you awesome. have to match the vibe. Yeah, it's going to be, like, high intensity, okay, like, cool. cool thing. Like, when I do a feature, I do, like, the soft, mellow music. Gotcha. Really, you know, do you change, is it the same music all throughout the, the whole clip, or? It depends how long the video is. Long. Usually, I mean, usually my highlights won't be longer than, like, two minutes, 30 seconds. So, usually one song does the trick cool. but sometimes you have to change it if it's a long feature yeah I have to gotcha. do it cool. um, so then once that's done once the music is in I think that's everything if anything needs to be color corrected you know like there's the read white balance thing mm. hopefully that doesn't happen that means I made a mistake on the field <laughs> <laughs> um, so once that's all done I export then I have to put them up on YouTube that's where we put all our videos and then we embed them on our website Okay. so I have to write the article put in a feature image mm-hmm. 
uh, you know, all of our tags that we put in, all our categories. I type those all into the website, put the video on YouTube, um, you know, again, do all the tags so that everyone can find it if they Google it. Courtney publishes the articles and videos on Jersey Sports Zone's site through WordPress, where formatting and placement matters to the company's overall brand and style. Consistency is key or else it just looks sloppy. Then I can publish, but then I have to go back into my project and figure out something for social media so that I can Project push it. in um, Adobe Adobe, Premier. yeah. Cool. I go back to my, my, you know, the sequence that I made and I pull out things that could be good for social media. Or if I had anything that I shot that I didn't put in the highlight that kind of was fun, like a smile or something mm-hmm. like the kids celebrating, I put that on social media. Um, and I export that as well. And then I start doing teasers all over. So I, we have Instagram, Twitter. We have LinkedIn now, which we just recently got, uh, Facebook, all of them. Mm -hmm. And it's our personal belief that visually social media, social media is a visual thing. And every single social media post that we do has some sort of video content with it. So I'll go and I'll go on Twitter, for example. I'll tag Bishop Bar, Carteret, Say the Score, Courtney Dupont has the highlights for you. Here's the link to the highlights. And then I'll also put the teaser video with that. So you oh, get nice. everything in one big go. package, you know what I mean? Cool. And then obviously hashtags are important and um, tagging any of the kids that were in the video is good too because they will They'll go berserk it or and something. retweet yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are all like the steps that we have to do for all that. Cool. Gotcha. Do and you, do you have a checklist for that too? It exists. That's almost like second nature now. Okay. It's It just comes naturally now. It's like, okay, I got that done, this, that, the other thing. Now it's 9 p.m. and it's time to do some research on this week's nominee for the Jersey Sports Zone Game Ball Awards. Courtney researches and gathers this past week's top athletes considering stats and nominations from fans or parents. Then she posts a poll so people can vote between Saturday and Tuesday at 3 p.m. On Wednesday, Courtney travels to a school to award the winner and shoot a video for additional content. The amount of nominations for the Game Ball Award are up to her. She gets to choose the games that she covers. She gets to edit the videos the way she wants to. And on top of that... Do you push everything out, or does anybody need to approve anything? Um, Honestly, at this point, my, my boss is totally like, do, do your thing. And if I mess up, he tells me. like He, mm-hmm. he looks at everything after oh, it's good. published. But... Um, I don't think he, I've never been regulated. I think at the very beginning he used to like ask for my voiceovers and like we would, he would like make comments about things, mm-hmm. but no, I don't get approved. It's just like, get it done, publish it, good. If there's right. mistakes, you're going to pay the price. Nice. <laughs> okay. And you rather that freedom. I mean, we talked love, about that. I love it. Yeah. I love the freedom. I think it's, the, it's very that's empowering. That's how you learn too. And like, <laughs> yeah. that's where you find your voice and well, your you, style. You learn about the, the whole business aspect of it too, about what makes people upset firsthand so that you're not hearing it from another person. Like if Rich mm-hmm. said, if if you told me that someone was upset with something I did, it's not the same as if they just said that they were upset with me. It like hits home harder that right. way. You know what I mean? So, exactly. Yeah. Rather than filtering it through your boss. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then you also made a note that you have to find out the pronunciation of the player's name. Oh my God. That's probably the most stressful part of my job. Yeah. <laughs> have you it's ever probably it the, wrong? Yes. <laughs> yes. Do you get yelled at for it? Oh, people, sometimes people are great about it. They're like, hey, thanks for it's the highlights. It's a hard name. Yeah. 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 So, well, no, thanks for the highlights. Um, you know, we're really appreciative, but this is how you say the name. Because right. it's just no way for me to know the pronunciation. Everyone spells their name differently. You know? Right. I do my best. The and English I, language is, the, is yes. just and annoyingly hard. Sometimes it's like, you know, <laughs> there's a, a Spanish pronunciation. So right. You know, it's just, yeah. there's a lot. So gotcha. I always do my best. If I know that I'm going to talk about a certain kid and I don't know his name, I go up to him and I try to ask, like, how do you say your name? <laughs> like, Perfect. Say it on camera so that I, you know. Yeah. But there's just moments when you get caught and you don't. No, and people, for the most part, are great. Sometimes they get mad at you. Yeah. And it's, you know, you just deal with it. Right. You made a mistake. That's, that's the bottom line. Go, and we fix it. We yeah. always fix you it. You fix it? Okay. So I'll take, the video, you, okay yeah. I'll take the video down. Um, I'll redo the voiceover. And gotcha. then it's kind of like starting from the beginning. It's a process because yes. you have the music track in there. You have everything already built in. So you mm. almost have to like try to match everything up again. Wow. Yeah, it's a process. But, um... It's, but it's worth it. It's to important. It's yeah. important to do. Now it's 10.30 at night and she's done for the day at an unusually early hour. Your day is finished. Is that odd that you're done that early? Or Yes. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> Usually things don't go that smooth. Gotcha. That, there are problems the whole way through. What, and could, then what type of problems? Just, you know... I'll get halfway through editing it and all of a sudden Adobe will fail on me and it'll delete half of what I just did. Uh, You know, something like that. Just silly, ridiculous editing things that happen. And then on top of that, 
nine times out of no, not times. I don't make that many mistakes, but <laughs> but like you know, when you make a mistake, I have to rego. I have to go back through that process, mm-hmm. and I have to you know. It's just if there's any delay, it's because of things that went wrong. Gotcha. Traffic, things like that. Like just cool. Yeah. And then um, you're also touching base with other MMJs and making sure they don't. Oh meet. yeah, we're constantly talking. Just oh, cool. up- updates too. We have a group chat, and it's like, oh my gosh, uh, DePaul just did this, and you know this happened, and there was one game where Somerville, I had a hurdle, a kid hurdled another kid. It was an unbelievable. <laughs> as soon as it happened, I was like, this is amazing. Like, <laughs> like jump over. Yeah, so you oh, wow. jump right over top of him. It was an Sheesh. awesome. Planet. Yeah, it was cool. That's so cool. Um, and when they do, what type of assistance are they going to be asking you for? Like just research or like, um, the other MMJs you like reach out and make sure they don't need help. Honestly. Uh, yeah. I mean, they can ask me questions. I do. I do the graphics. So if there's a problem with the graphics, you know, that's what they reach out for me for. Most of the time it's just like to have a person to talk to. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Because we're all alone. Like, you know, so it's, it's nice to just have someone who is going through the same things that you're going through, but you know, you're just in different places. So that's all. So it's obviously 1030 on a Saturday. You worked all day. Are you going out? Are you having fun after this? Are you tired? I'm very tired at this point. But I like to see my boyfriend (laughs) if I can. um, You know, I'll go out for a drink or two with him and his friends. If not, I'll probably stay in and... If there's a late game or something like that mm-hmm. on TV, I'll watch that and curl up with my dog. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. So, um, so most games are on the weekends. Yeah. Right? So what is the work-life balance throughout the week then? like for Well, you? there are games during the week. My light days, for, game-wise, are Mondays and Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. Wednesdays, I usually end up doing a game ball. Um, oh, okay. I oh, do the right. delivery that process. So that's not a big deal. And Mondays are lighter. Um, usually like a, just a low pri- profile game, mm-hmm. um, which is good because you give you give attention to the kids that don't normally have it. Gotcha. Um, you know, those smaller schools that yes. have games on Mondays, which is weird. But cool. Yeah. There you have it. You just experienced a day in the life of a multimedia sports journalist at Jersey Sports Zone. It's a long day, but you know how it goes. If you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And Courtney loves what she does. Next up, the experience episode in the Sideline Stand-Up series. You'll learn what experience got Courtney the job she has today. Check back here on Wednesday for that episode and join us on Friday for the Discuss episode. You can get to know us and our guests more by keeping up with us on social. Join our community on Instagram and LinkedIn at Experience Adittle. That's Experience A-D-I-T-L. There we share our guests' rapid rounds, life hacks, and advice to you, along with pictures and videos from our Manhattan studio, Gotham Podcast Studio. Thanks for listening. To find the show notes with all relevant links and photos for this series, head over to experienceadittle.com. That's Experience A-D-I-T-L dot com. If you learned something in this episode, please take some time to help our mission by leaving a positive rating and review of the show. Each week, we bring you a new interview series with guests from different jobs and industries. In every series, we live a specific day in the life, hour by hour, experience the career journey, and have a discussion about what we learned. So don't forget to subscribe.